In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at five new features that I really like in the first release of the year, the 2025.1 update. Check it out. What's going on guys and happy new year to you all. Let's kick this off then with one of the biggest features of this update and it's all about the automated backups. As of 2025.1, Home Assistant now lets you quickly and easily set up your own automated backups without the need of any scripts, automations, additional integrations or add-ons. This is now all baked in and it uses the brand new wizard to guide you through the simple recommended backup settings or you can make use of the custom options which allows you to tailor the backup schedule and retention policy to fit your needs. One of the other cool features with the new backups is the fact that it allows you to specify backup locations so things aren't just stored on your internal hard drive. At the time of recording there's currently only three locations available but locations are exposed to integrations so over time I expect integration maintainers to adopt this and expose those integrations to the backups so I expect to see things like Google Drive, Synology and other places available in these new backups. With those three storage locations that I mentioned, one of those is an entirely new location and it's the Home Assistant Cloud. If you happen to be an active Home Assistant Cloud user, then you'll now be automatically entitled to five gigabytes of free storage as part of your membership without any additional cost to you. With this five gigabytes, it will allow you to back up and store the latest version of your Home Assistant as one singular backup. Straight out of the box, backups are all encrypted and secure, and using this brand new setup wizard, there really is no reason for you to not back up your Home Assistant. If you're after a bit more detail and information and a full run through of this whole backup system, then be sure to check out this video that I've created. This runs through a full detailed guide on how to do it and what all the settings are. Next up, we've got a brand new feature, and this one was actually contributed as part of last month's month of what the heck, and it's some new key bindings. Using your keyboard, you can now quickly navigate to a device by simply just pressing the D key and then entering the name of the device that you want. This is by far one of the quickest ways to jump to an individual device and it's great for all of you power users. Also, if you weren't aware, you can also make use of the C and E keys. These respectively allow you to access controls and entities and the other new key binding that was added was the A key. Simply pressing the A key will bring up your assist prompt and you can start making use of Home Assistant Assist. I'm far too lazy to edit the whole head explosion, so uh, cheers Paul. If we're staying on topic with assist, my third new feature is a welcome small change to the way that entities are actually exposed to assist. Previously, all new entities were automatically exposed to assist, but now using a brand new toggle, you can actually turn this functionality off, giving you full control of what entities you want to expose. Zooming in then to my penultimate feature, and we've got zoom for graphs. Graphs have received a nice new upgrade that allows you to zoom in on both graphs and bars. No longer will you be staring at those little lines and dots and trying to guesstimate what happened at what time. Whilst you're on the desktop, you'll be able to make use of the control or command key and just scroll with the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. And whilst on mobile, you'll be able to make use of the standard pinch and zoom as you'd expect. This one's a nice little feature to have and there are some additional plans to improve the functionality and add some additional things to graphs in some future updates. My fifth and final feature is another contribution that's been brought forth from the month of what the heck and this one goes hand in hand with those other desktop navigational things that we spoke about and if you couldn't tell I really like these little desktop ones but this one is data table searchability. If you're ever using Home Assistant on your desktop, then more than likely the first thing you do when you're trying to jump to something in Home Assistant, rather than using those cool keyboard shortcuts we mentioned, is you press Ctrl and F. Pressing Ctrl and F natively just brings up the browser search, and usually using this you have to tab through to find the thing that you want, and sometimes it actually just doesn't find the thing that you're looking for. Now when you're in Home Assistant, anywhere that uses a search input, if you press this Ctrl and F, the input will automatically focus into the search bar, and then you can simply just start typing. This will then make use of all the filtering and searching, and the thing that you're looking for will just automatically appear. And there we go guys, that's been a quick look at five of the new features that I really like. If you are interested in checking out the full release notes, I'll leave a link to them in the description below. These are just five of the points that I really liked, but there are a whole bunch of new features and changes included in this update. If you've enjoyed this video, then don't forget to drop me a like, and if you're not already, hit that subscribe button and ding dong the notification bell, and you'll be alerted to any future video that I do. 
As always, a massive thank you to these awesome dudes. These awesome dudes are my Patreons and also my YouTube members. And if you're interested in helping support my channel, which in turn allows me to create videos like this, then you'll find links to all of the places that you can go to support me, all in the description below. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.